Hey guys, this is a tutorial on how to solve with pyramids with one algorithm. So this is kind of a uh, beginnerized version of L4E. So you're going to start by building a V and then uh, kind of doing something like, you know, these last four edges. But it's a lot simpler than that explanation to make it seem. Um, you, with some practice, you should be able to get around sub 10 uh, with this method. But you only are going to need to learn one algorithm, and it's pretty simple. You'll catch on really quick. Alright, so if you want to follow the scramble that I'm going to be using for this first walkthrough, uh, it'll be at the top of the screen right now. And make sure that you put green on front, yellow on bottom. Okay, so now that we're scrambled, the uh, first thing we need to go over is which which pieces are which. So these are tips, and they're extremely easy to solve. They're always going to be one move away, no matter what. You can really do them at any time during the solve that you want, uh, whatever is most convenient for you, whether that's the beginning or the end. These are edge pieces, which is why uh, this is the advanced method would be uh, last four edges, which is why we're dealing with these edges at the end of the method. And then these are centerpieces. So our first step is to get three of these centerpieces all on the same side. So an example could be uh, yellow. So I see I have two yellow centers on this side right now. And I have this yellow center right here. So I would just turn it like that. And then I have all of my yellows on the same side. Um, another example is I could do that with green, like that. Um, a little bit more complicated, I could do red, like this. But what was pretty easy was just to do yellow like that, which is very convenient. Okay, so now that we have all of our centers solved, we're going to go ahead and do two edges. So I guess I'm just going to solve the tips now because it's convenient while we're doing this layer. Um, what we're going to need to look for is we're going to look for an edge that will go in this slot. So if I look at the center pieces that are connected to it, I have yellow and blue. So we're going to want to look for the yellow and blue edge. Okay, so I see it's right here. What we're going to do is we're going to move it so that it's lined up with its center um, and it's close to this edge, and what we're going to do is we're just going to bring up this spot, rotate the top layer in like that, and bring it down, just like that. Okay, so we have one edge done, and now we can do green, say. So I see I have yellow and green, so we're going to look for the yellow and green edge, which is right here, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it over to this spot, so it's matched up like this, and we're just going to bring up this empty slot, put it in, and bring it back down like that. Now say that you bring the edge over and you see that it's like this and it's flipped, so it's close to this edge right here, but these centers aren't matching, then you can just rotate it over here and they will be matching. So you can see that we're done solving the V, so you basically have the first layer except for one edge, and this is kind of how the advanced method L4E can time with this because we have one, two, three, four edges left to do. So now is just a convenient time for me to solve this tip, um, you know, just one move away. And the first thing we're going to do in this step is we're going to look at what edge is right here in our V. And I can see that it's the green-blue edge. So on the top, we're going to look for the green-blue centers, which are right here. Then what we're going to want to do is we're going to line it up so... Uh, these pieces are not matching and then you can bring up this piece in the direction of its corresponding center you're going to move it out of the way into the back and then bring this back down so it stays in shape at this point if you either have a solved layer or this piece is flipped like this uh, then simply just take it out like so um, and then solve for this edge. So I see it's still the green and blue, but it's flipped differently. So these two pieces are not matching. 
I bring it up to its corresponding center, send it at the back, just like that. You can see how that ended up solving my pyraminx. Uh, that may have happened for you as well, but if it didn't, you should be at a step that looks something like this, uh, and we'll have three edges left to deal with. Um, what you're going to look for is you're going to look for the red and yellow edge that goes in this slot. And what we're going to do is we're just going to move it down like this, um, move it over to the side. So this is just an empty piece that we don't really care about. Bring it back up and preserve this like that. Now you may have also noticed that that did solve my pyraminx, but that's because in that final step you can have one of two cases. And the other case will look like this. If you insert this edge and it's not solved, you're going to have two edges left that are going to need to be flipped. You can see that this red and blue can be flipped in place, and this green and red can be flipped in place like that. And the algorithm we're going to use is this one algorithm that we have to learn. I'm going to put it at the top of the screen right now. It goes like this. And then your pyraminx will be solved. If we notice that this is inserted into here, um, you can either take it out and then work from here, or you can look around and you can actually see that if I move this layer uh, to here, we have two edges left. So what I can do is I can just move this here, execute that algorithm, and turn it back. Okay, so now that your pyraminx is solved, I'm going to go through one example solve, but I'm going to use some slightly more moderate intermediate techniques that will help you get your times faster. So if you're not looking to get really fast, you can be done, but if you are looking to get pretty fast, uh, then you can watch this next example solve as well and learn some tricks as, as along with what you've learned. I'm going to be using the same scramble again, but we're going to use something a bit different. So there's actually a technique that we can use to our advantage called block building, and that is where we use different moves than simply just a direct solution like that. That'll help us uh, kind of have an easier solution. Usually with block building, uh, somewhere on the cube, or on the pyraminx, uh, might I say, you should be able to get all your centers solved and have one edge solved at the same time using block building. So you only have to insert one other edge and then you can continue with the other steps. So with red, I see that here's the red and blue centers and here's the red and blue edge. So what we can actually do before we solve for this side is we can connect that edge like that. Then we're going to bring this up and bring this up, which will solve this edge. And just before we stop, let's look around if there's uh, any better solutions. Okay, not really. These two other edges are kind of hard to work with. So we can just solve like that. And you see that I just flip here. Um, this edge is already matched up and everything. So we can just insert it. And you can kind of see how uh, much more efficient that first V was. So then we're going to look here and we're going to see that we have the green and yellow edge stuck in here. Uh, these two centers, now they're misaligned. These two aren't matching bring it up to its corresponding spot, bring this in, which is already connected, and bring it down here. Uh, now you want to get used to being able to, being able to recognize this case without it being turned into its certain position like this. So I can recognize that the, this edge and this edge need to be flipped, execute the algorithm, and solve the tip like that, and your pyraminx is solved.